Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Right? And so this gives them that ability to take care of that. But anyway, the bottom line is that in, Mary and Frank can always qualify for Mass Health while they're both alive because the purchase of the annuity that we were just talking about. Uh, can be of an infinitely large size. We have literally done million dollar annuities, right? Um, so a couple of other things. Um, so I just mentioned irrevocable trust kind of disparagingly, you know, because I think they're way, way, way overused and unnecessary. There are a few cases though where Frank and Mary might, might have considered an irrevocable trust. Not in their situation, but if they owned a vacation home, if they owned a house on the Cape, or I do a lot of work on Martha's Vineyard, so there's a lot of houses down there, that, and of course they're worth a lot of money. And, 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 and if Ma Frank and Mary's estate plan, remember, was to sell everything and divide it among the kids. And that's really what, the, what they would want and what the kids would want regarding their house. But regarding the house on Martha's Vineyard, ooh, we don't want to sell that, right? Everybody wants to go to that, right? Or the house on the Cape, right? So, and in, and in this case, remember I told you the basic plan here is if Mary goes to the nursing home, we shift everything to Frank, right? Well, that could include um, the, co the cottage, right? Except the cottage is probably worth, m worth more than the house, right? Which means it's going to put Frank way over asset. So there are two possibilities in that case if you're Frank and Mary. One would be to pull the value out of the cottage by taking a big mortgage on it and we're actually doing that right now with a cottage on an island in Maine, right? That the kids really don't want to sell, right? So what we're doing is we're, we're, we're taking a big mortgage on the cottage, thereby reducing the equity in the, in the cottage to practically nothing. So that the, the spouse at home can say that's part of that 117,000 in value that they have. But the other more common alternative is you have to sell the cottage. Nobody wants to sell the cottage. And in this case, that's probably the thing that they were most interested in leaving to the kids. So in that case, what, you may, what they may want to do is have that cottage put into an irrevocable trust. Either, either transfer the cottage to the kids early, keep a life estate in it, keep control over it while they're alive, or transfer it to one or more of them as the trustees of an irrevocable trust and wait five years. With that exception though, and I gave you a couple of other examples, you know, the lot in Florida that's always hanging around. What I always tell people is sell that lot in Florida. You know, everybody's got one of these, right? They're none of them worth anything, right? It's like the timeshares. Oh, what am I gonna do with my timeshare? What's it worth? There are companies now that, that will basically tell you in return for your transferring to them your timeshare and $8,000, they'll take it off your hands, you know? There are, there are actually companies now doing that, so don't worry about those. Um, similar, if you have any really big assets, um, if you, you know, boats, planes, trains, if you need, that, that may be an asset that you want to transfer out and wait. But otherwise, you know, just, you, Mary and Frank really don't have to do anything. Well, what about um, if Mary wants to stay at home, though? What about if she, she um, broke her hip and went to the nursing home? And, or really doesn't want to go to the nursing home, she really wants to be home, right? Because who wants to go to the nursing home, right? Um, but she really figures that she couldn't afford it because the amount of home care she's going to need is really going to be a lot. And, and you saw their savings, you know, and you saw their income, and you know that home care is going to cost them, if they're hiring somebody, what, $15 to $20 an hour? If they're hiring an agency, what, $25 to $30 an hour, right? That varies. And if she needs a lot of hours, she's got a real problem, right? Well, if, she, if Mary is otherwise eligible for nursing home care, then she is also eligible for all those programs that MassHealth has designed to keep her out of the nursing home. The whole package of frail elder waiver programs, the personal care attendant program, and adult foster care. Personal care attendant program, and specifically you can hire an individual if you're Mary to take care of those, at the, assisting you with those activities of daily living for which you need assistance, and that individual can be your child, right? 
under the, uh, the adult foster care program, which a lot of people refer to as caregiver homes. Um, it, the, the, hmm? It's different. They're different ones. I often hear caregiver homes. I guess it's big in our area. There, there may be, a, there, I'm sure, sure there were others. Basically, uh, it, it, the concept behind caregiver homes and all those, though, is it's really a foster care program. It's the same thing as regular foster care for kids, except it's foster care for old people, where the person who is the foster child in this case, or, or foster other person, um, can receive a check regularly from the state to compensate them for being around and, and assisting with those activities of daily living. In all of those programs, though, first of all, Mary has to get over the hurdle of qualifying for Mass Health, right? Now, a couple things about that. Um, first of all, uh, Mary's assets, in that case, have to also be no more than $2,000 in order for her to qualify for those programs that are going to allow Mary to stay home. Frank's assets, though, can be unlimited. So going back to the example that we were giving, all you do, this is really simple, you just transfer everything to Frank. And in that case, that would even work regarding the cottage on the Cape. You could just transfer everything to Frank, and the next day, Mary could be eligible for all these programs. Frank's income is also unlimited, right? No cap. Um, Mary's income, though, is capped. $2,164, if I recall correctly at this point. $2,164 um, per month. Um, above which, what happens? Oh, well, we're going to get to that. Because a lot of folks will rel regularly tell Frank and Mary in this case that Mary can't qualify for the frail, uh, that, that, that if Frank is trying to qualify for the frail elder waiver, he can't because he has too much income. Remember, he had income of $2,500. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. So, first of all, though, as you know, you are the ASAPs. Um, the gatekeepers regarding who qualifies for the frail elder waiver is you, right? So you're the ones who are going into the home and figuring out whether they need assistance with the activities of daily living, whether they need supervision, and you're doing the medical certificate. By the way, is there anybody here, any ASAP here, where you have trouble, you don't want to give that certificate to the attorney so that that can be filed with the Mass Health application? No, because there, there are a couple of places. I'm told in the Berkshires, and I know down on Cape Cod in the islands, where I was told that they were hesitant, that, that they had simply developed a tradition down there that they did the process like in reverse, that they qualified somebody for mass health or filed the application. The application came back saying, yes, you're financially qualified, but you're not medically qualified yet. And then the ASAP would do the examination. But so, like to send them in together. Yeah, we always want to send them in together. Like it, it works really well. And as a matter of fact, one of the speakers, I just saw him, Ken Smith, who was here from, from uh, the state, Yes, from Elder Affairs, has act, had actually been working with us at NALA, the Elder Law, Lawyers Association, on, on trying to make that program work better, right? Trying to speed that program along. So that now, if you file an application for a frail elder waiver, I think, what, what, what is, I think you have the top, if you put like expedited, right? Frail elder waiver, right? Um, they'll, they'll speed them along, like within the, within the process, right? But they're working, really working to try to make that process faster. Um, but now go back to, but now say that Frank has died, right? And so we can't do all those wonderful things, you know, regarding getting Mary qualified all, right away because Mary's got all of these assets. And now I'm going to pretend that Mary's income has gone up to $2,500, that Frank's uh, Social Security had actually been $2,500, and therefore when he died, her income jumped to $2,500 a month, right? And therefore, she's over that magic number that we talked about earlier. So, and then she's got all of these assets. So what can she do? Is there anything that she can do? Well, first of all, and I guess, first of all, I want to talk about this in, as it relates to nursing home care. The answer is yes. In most cases, she still wants to qualify for um, mass health if she's in the nursing home. Uh, and she still can. Remember the house we talked about is, a, is not a countable asset, right? There's a lien that gets put on the house following her qualifying for mass health, but the house itself is not going to disqualify her from qualifying. Um, she has too much cash though, right? She has too much money, right? So there are two places where she can put that money without there having been any look back period and then immediately qualify for mass health. One is a so-called D4C. Know what a D4C is? Raise your hand, D4C pooled trust, 
know what a pooled trust is? Oh, this is great. So this really is worth the price of admission. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> and then the other is that Mary could buy an annuity. Why would she want to do either of those things, though? Because if she's buying an annuity, she's buying an annuity, and the monthly checks are all going to the nursing home. And if she, and if she, and if she puts money into a D4C, a pooled trust, the rules of the D4C are that following her death, whatever um, MassHealth is owed, MassHealth has a lien on that money too. So MassHealth can get the money back. 